What's up everybody, it's Cowboy Culturism here, and today, if I can get it out of my pants, we're going to talk concealed carry. So what do we have here on the table in front of us? Well, what we have is a Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0 Compact. This is the 4-inch uh, model in 9mm. So... There you go, you got your fancy 9mm. I've had some accoutrements to it, but nothing too crazy, nothing too out of the ordinary. You know, we've got a TLR7A here, we've got a Hollow Sun 507C. This is the one with the uh, ACSS Vulcan reticle. Um, really like the dot, uh, but honestly, I probably would have just got a regular dot. Unfortunately, Hollow Sun didn't make a version of this dot, which has that giant ring around the outside, but also uh, is just a regular dot in the center. So I've got a chevron, which I can use for ranging if you think you can really range shots on a pistol. Um, I've done some minor modifications to the frame and this back strap here because I carry appendix and notoriously Smith & Wessons have a very aggressive grip texture. Um, and so on this side, when this was uh, up against my stomach, I'm a righty by the way, when this is up against my stomach, um, this was a very unpleasant feeling. I didn't want to wear two shirts, so I just took a file, I, I slid down this side, and uh, I modified the back strap with an X-Acto knife. Is that really recommended for uh, resaleability? No, but I wasn't really concerned at the time about getting a new uh, concealed carry pistol anytime soon. Plus these back straps are like $10 on Amazon, so wasn't really worried about that. Um, as I press out after doing those things, I, I don't really feel anything different, um, so I'm not really too concerned with that. Anyway, if you've seen Smith & Wesson's, uh, you know they've got uh, a few different variants of the M&P 2.0 Compact. Uh, it's still the 2.0, but sometimes you'll get 2.0s without this uh, front slide serrations. Sometimes you'll get 2.0s. Uh, with the front slide serrations, sometimes you'll get them with the optic height sight, sometimes you won't. Um, all of these all fall under the banner of the 2.0. Recently, they've upgraded their trigger system on in here uh, to one of the one of the triggers that's kind of more flat faced, right? It looks a lot like an Apex trigger. I think they were directly inspired by the amount of people buying Apex triggers to go and change their trigger geometry. The other thing I've done is I've taken the uh, bottom plate of this magazine here and I've swapped it in for a um, full size 17 rounder base plate. And what this gives me the ability to do is if I put the magazine in, <clears throat> if I put the magazine in, this gives me a little bit of a pinky rest. Uh, without it, it feels kind of like my uh, my pinkies are falling off the gun. You see what's going on there? Uh, I don't really like that feeling. I don't have overly sized hands or anything like that. Maybe I've just got fat fingers or something, but my pinky does want to slide off the end of the grip there. So with the magazine inserted, so I got to work around the tripod here. It gives me just a little shelf to hold on to, and I really appreciate that. So as I'm shooting, uh, my my fingers, my, my grip feels like it's actually solid on the gun, and that's about it. So real quick, the way that I carry, um, I use a T-Rex Arms sidecar. I'm a big fan of T-Rex Arms as a company, and I enjoy their philosophy, um, and it's really inspired me to um, become an, a, a competent gun owner. And so I ended up getting their sidecar holster. Um, and it's worked great. I really don't have any issues with this holster. I like that I can uh, have this attachment mechanism switch to things like a pistol mag, or as you see it set up here, I carry a tourniquet in here, and then I carry a uh, <clears throat> spare magazine in my pocket. This is the uh, this is kind of a similar deal. I, I replaced this uh, bottom plate so I can have a shelf on there. What is it, SIG V-Crown? Uh, not the best carry ammunition, but this gun likes it. Anyway, I keep the spare mag in my pocket. I keep the tourniquet on the sidecar, and the sidecar is carried appendix, and that's how I've been carrying for, let's see, about two years now. Really, it's nothing special. It's a 9mm compact striker-fired gun in a 4-inch barrel, um, but I really like it. I've really had a good time with it. But recently, uh, I was asked by my girlfriend about what she could do to start getting into concealed carry. Now, the reason that... <clears throat> I'm kind of standoffish about that generally is because I'm worried that a lot of times when people talk to me about concealed carry, you know, I'm colloquially the gun guy of the family and friend group. So people come to me and they ask me, what should I do to conceal carry? And my immediate reaction is like, don't. <laughs> my immediate reaction is like, don't do that. You'll probably, you'll probably do it wrong. You'll probably do something stupid. Um, and unless you're actually serious about putting down actual money, um, 
I don't really give a lot of people the time of day when it comes to like what they should do. Maybe that makes me an elitist. Um, but one of the first things I say to people is like budget a thousand dollars and that to them always sounds crazy, but like I, I break it down for them. I'm like, if you got a, a Glock full price from a gun store, it's like $600, $650. Uh, you get a good holster. That's more money. You get ammunition. That's more money. You get a light on the gun. That's more money. You need extra magazines. That's going to be more money. And you'll probably want to have some amount of medical training and a class to do. And in the state that I'm in, we actually have to do the, uh, concealed carry classes so that's money so normally when people come to me i'm like budget a thousand dollars and get back to me <laughs> and maybe that makes me sound like a dick but um realistically that's what i've been telling people that's what i've been saying to people if they're interested in concealed carry and so my girlfriend comes to me and it's no different i'm like you're gonna want to budget like a thousand dollars and you know at first she was like you know that's a lot of money but i'm serious about it because i really care uh about my safety <clears throat> and I care about the safety of other people. Now that to me was normally the second thing. I'm like, I don't carry for myself. I carry for the safety of other people and those people who aren't looking out for themselves uh, and people who can't protect themselves like my, like children and family members, you know, people like that. They're not going to have the police coming to their location immediately after they, they make the call. You know what I mean? They're, they're going to have to wait. What's the famous saying? Where, where are the police when you need them the most? About 15 minutes out. You know, I think that's a good reason to carry is that you actually are more interested in protecting other people. You're more interested in protecting people who can't protect themselves or who don't know any better. And so um, she she checked off the first two boxes. I, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of her. I'm glad that she said that. Um, and then I said, well, are, are you actually serious about it? And she said, yes. And I said, well, I'd love to I'd love to help you out. And so this gun, as I have it configured right here, um, has been my great concealed carry pistol. And that's where we get to today's topic. Uh, we started talking about EDC a little bit. We started talking about why my conditions have changed and why I'm going to get a new EDC pistol. And I did end up getting a new EDC pistol. And now we're going to talk about that. So let me bust out the brand new, the brand new, the brand new concealed carry pistol. Let me get it. The brand new Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 Compact. Wow, but this one's a little bit different. But we're going to get, we're going to talk about this now. We're going to talk about the new Smith & Wesson that I have. And it is a Smith & Wesson 2.0 Compact. And it's not in the box. Are you ready for the big reveal? The big reveal, here it is. Whoa, it's a Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 Compact. Isn't that awesome? I hate having to say the full name on that. It's just so long and drawn out. Um, a lot of people call it the M&P 9, uh, but I feel kind of obliged to do the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 Compact. Um, so anyway, I got a new Smith & Wesson M&P 9. Um, this is a spec series pistol. You'll notice that the color is a bull shark gray, I believe. You'll notice that the trigger geometry is a little bit different. This is one of their newer triggers. Um, and we'll be comparing this quickly to the uh, M&P 2.0 Compact from over here and seeing what really is different. So what do you get in the box? You get the pistol. The pistol has an updated geometry on the, on the trigger and it has a 4.6 inch threaded barrel. You get two of these 23 round magazines um, with these awesome little spacers that slide right off. Smith, you could totally change this. You could totally just make this, you know, just flush fit. Uh, I wouldn't care. Um, but as it sits right here, I, I despise the spacer, but whatever. You also get your four inch knife from Smith & Wesson. Um, I cannot legally conceal carry this knife. Uh, anywhere, I think, in the United States. I, I'm not a knife guy, but uh, I guess it's cool because it comes with a glass breaker and a seatbelt cutter, so maybe I'll just keep it um, in the little tray on my in my vehicle. So, four-inch knife, giant. Um, as compared to the gun, it's uh, longer. <laughs> it's longer than the gun. I can get some uh, Black Ops stuff going. Look. Yeah, there we go. Black Ops 1, get this going. Thanks. I guess. I think they're supposed to be color matched, but I think this is a slightly different gray. Maybe I'm blind, but I don't see them really being color matched. 
So what else do you get in the box? You get two you get two 23 round magazines, you get one 15 round magazine. Um, you get four different back strap sizes, which is awesome because um, I, I normally need to swap it to the smallest back strap size uh, because that's what feels the most comfortable to me. And here's your half by 28 threaded barrel. Um, I will say I have been fiddling with this a little bit. Uh, this isn't out of the box impressions, really. It's just me breaking down what you would get if you ordered a Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0 spec series uh, compact. So the, the thread protector, I will say in me racking the gun and dry firing it, uh, it does want to kind of slip off, which sucks. So, you know, I'll crank it down there, um, whatever, send it home a few times and look, it's loose. So, um, I don't know. I, this is my first gun with a thread protector. So maybe I will, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. But yep, here's the gun. Here's what you get. Here's your back straps. Oh, the most important thing. Look at this. Wow. A challenge coin. 2022 spec series. That's last year. MMP spec series. We've got the MMP 2.0 pistol, Smith and Wesson MMP. Oh, and you got the 23 round Stendo in there. <clears throat> wow. Look, it's just like the picture here. I'll, I'll match the angle. Wow, isn't that so cool, dude? A challenge coin? Whoa. So I forget the actual MSRP for these things um, because I didn't buy it at MSRP. I bought it uh, severely reduced. Uh, I think once it all worked out, I ordered it for like $550. Uh, I got a $100 rebate, so we'll call this kit $450. dollars um, then I had to pay my $25 transfer fee and probably some shipping and handling. So we'll call it, we'll call it 475 invested into this, which is awesome because on this gun over here, I genuinely got this pistol for $400, um, which I was really happy with because I really wanted one. I really liked this gun. I shot with it and I was like, Oh, like $650. That's crazy. $600. That's crazy. Um, and then I got this for $400 on like a black Friday sale. Um, so yeah, this was this was a good purchase. This has been a good gun. It's been great for my concealed carry purposes. I shoot it well. Um, well, <laughs> well, if you watch my previous video where I'm taking the KP-104 out and shooting it, maybe you wouldn't say I shoot this well, but I shoot this gun, it shoots, and the gun shoots, and I shoot it. <laughs> so yeah, that's this gun, and it's been great. I really have enjoyed it, but um, because my girlfriend wants to get into this, because she shoots it well, because she wants to protect herself, she wants to protect uh, other people who can't protect themselves, and she cares about all the principles that I think are important if you're actually going to get into concealed carry and take it seriously, this will end up to be her gun, and this gun will end up being my gun. Yeah, first threaded gun. Uh, I, I was looking at options for me if I wanted to put something on it like a compensator. Um, and there's one by PMM I'm interested in. Maybe I'll end up with a PMM a Parker Mountain machining uh, compensator on the end of this. That would be kind of cool. Um, the threaded barrel does not feel weird as I'm concealed carrying it. Uh, especially appendix, which is, you know, I got a barrel pressed up against my valuables straight up. And no, it doesn't feel weird. I don't notice it, but maybe if I put uh, a Parker Mountain machining uh, deal on here, uh, I would notice it. It'd be a little bit wider around here, but I think these holsters are cut. These T-Rex Arms holsters are cut for compensators. Um, so yeah. So real quick, are there any differences between this gun and this gun? Well, threaded barrel, first and foremost, that's different. 4.6 inch threaded barrel on the Bull Shark Gray 2.0 spec series. On this gun, it looks like it's about just four inches flat. Uh, you'll see the trigger geometry is different. So we can ghost that on camera real quick. Guns are unloaded. I don't think I've even put a round in this gun yet. Let me be doubly sure because I know how YouTube can get. Look, it's clear. Look, it's clear. Here's the triggers on camera. Uh, I noticed that this trigger feels gritty right out of the box. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, so maybe, hopefully this gun breaks in because this is going to be my gun that I carry. Then you hit a wall. 
and then we're pulling, we're pulling, we're pulling, it's moving, we're pulling, and we got a break. So let's try the reset on this one, and it's a real short reset, feels good. Maybe I should be doing this with the hand I'd actually be shooting with. Gritty, wall, break, good reset, short reset, no complaints in that department. But I will say the trigger feels gritty uh, on the travel on the way back. I don't know if you can hear that. You hear that? Um, anyway, gritty, feels gritty, but quick pulls, reset. Is good. So, trigger's okay. It's supposed to be an upgrade. Let's compare it to this trigger. Um, we've got a smoother travel. Um, this trigger is of a different type. You've got this kind of hinge safety as opposed to the uh, other version. So, it's smooth traveling back, hit a wall, hit a wall, break. You know, I genuinely would take either of these triggers. I'm not a trigger snob. I know that's something that people care about, but if the gun goes off for me and it's not 15 pounds, because I do have an old gun that is like 15 pounds, it's ridiculous. Um, this is more than adequate. Either of these are more than adequate. I think personally, um, if I could pick, I'd end up with this trigger on this gun. We'll pull, wall for both. We're pulling, break. It almost feels like this one's a little bit heavier, but this one does have like 500 rounds through it, so might have just worn in. Break. So I don't know, I'd take either of these triggers. I mean, this one feels better to me. This one's okay. Um, I don't know. They're triggers, dude. They're, they're triggers on striker fire guns. What can you really do? So, yeah. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything in the box. Um, and now we will do some magic where we take all the accoutrements off this gun and put it on this gun. So, here it goes. Bink. And, yeah. So, this is how I will be carrying it every single day of my life. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, probably not with a 23-round magazine. Um, probably something more like this. Um, so this will be how I'll be carrying it. The reason that I swapped the slide and the frame is because I don't care about, um, ooh, it's special spec series, whatever crap. Uh, I care about looks and functionality. And with this, she gets a gun she knows, a gun she trusts, and she likes the gray little slide on, on this gun. So... She's getting the black frame that she likes um, with a gray slide. This is what she wanted. This is what I wanted. It all works out. So, yeah, did I think, do I think this was a worthwhile investment? Uh, yes, here's why. I'll give you the rundown. Um, doing this, I get to keep the same familiar gun feel that uh, I have been using and I have been carrying. I get to use all the same uh, holsters that I have. You know, I've got a level 3 holster if you've seen my other videos. Um, but in addition, I actually end up with a few more accoutrements here that uh, I'm, I'm more happy about than anything else. You know, these 23-round magazines, for instance, uh, these, these magazines, uh, normally I carry a 17 or two 17-rounders in my war belt. Um, but with these, I get to replace those and um, from 17 to 23 um, times two, I get more ammunition. Um, the way that it works out financially as well, um, she gets a gun for cheap, I get extra accoutrements for cheap. But yeah, and the way that it works out, uh, we're both going to end up in the Smith family of firearms. We're both going to be carrying uh, guns we like, guns we're confident with, um, guns we know. Uh, we get to keep the same magazine, we get to keep the same caliber. Uh, we both have capable guns, now it's just time to become capable shooters, so let's slap a 23 rounder in here because it's a freaking vibe dude look at that yeah with a compensator out here that would be so cool uh, i might end up upgrading this uh, tlr 7a to something like a surefire x300 there's a lot of holsters on the market that would be compatible with a smith and wesson mp 2.0 compact and uh, i could also put a 
uh, Surefire X300 on there. Keep the feel of the gun, up the weight a little bit to add to the shootability, add to the distance in which I'm able to visibly see uh, what I'd be shooting at. And yeah, so that pretty much does it. That's the Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0 Compact Spec Series. Um, as you can tell, it's it's very spec. It's it's very spec, I guess. I don't really know what that means. I don't really know why um, this has been advertised so much, the spec series, I mean, because uh, the spec series is really just a polymer frame with extra magazines, extra large magazines, and it's still a four-inch compact size, so I don't know who they're marketing this to, the hood. Um, if they did it in the hood, they've lost. It's made its way to the country, and now I am the the proud owner of a spec series mp 2.0 compact i don't know man i just when it all comes down to it she wanted to conceal carry uh frankly i wanted her to conceal carry for what she does for a living and now we've got two mps two 2.0 compacts and i'm able to actually use the same gun i'm familiar with she's able to use a gun that uh, she can shoot and she does know how to at the end of the day this looks freaking sick uh, and that's the most important thing. So let me grab the battle belt real quick so I can give more context to that. So this is the battle belt from the last video. As you can see, it's still got my bake mags in it. Um, it's got an Alien Gear Rapid Force Duty holster um, that fits the Smith & Wesson MP 2.0 compact. Take this, slide it in. Works great still. Um, but then, even better, uh, this gun, which doesn't have a threaded barrel, uh, fits in fine. This gun that has a threaded barrel and a light fits in fine. No issues there. As you can see, it's kind of cut for a larger light, so if I want an X300, I can totally do that. But the real thing that's exciting about this is that I have two extra pistol magazines um, on this belt and some STAT Kiwis. But when I take the spec series uh, things that come with it, I'm able to replace these 17 rounders just like this with two 23 rounders. And they fit fine, they look great, except for these stupid Smith & Wesson spacers. Uh, everything is in good shape, so. Yeah, if you're curious about the belt, it's a uh, T-Rex Arms, of course it is. T-Rex Arms uh, battle belt, I don't know if they're still running these anymore, but it's a belt that goes over everything, and, and that's the condition which I can most likely see myself using this in, so I'm happy with this belt, it's worked fine. Got the bake mag in there, because you always gotta find these minor opportunities to flex on, flex on people. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, relax. But yeah. I think that pretty much does it for everything that I've got in this video. A little bit of an updated uh, kit going on. Um, getting some larger magazines, getting uh, an, a second gun, uh, getting a second M&P 2.0 compact. Uh, disregarding the stupid marketing from Smith saying it's spec series, whatever, and just just scraping them for everything that they can give me in terms of in terms of product. I don't know if I mentioned this in the uh, earlier portions of this video, but this knife is ginormous, dude. This knife is huge, like like as compared to a Bakelite mag. Here, same same height as a bait, bake mag from corner to corner, from the furthest corners. That's a freaking giant knife, dude. Look at that thing. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, don't know if I have that much use for this, but I guess a glass breaker never hurt anybody to have in a seatbelt cutter, so... Yeah, so I think that pretty much does it for this video, guys. If you want to call me names in the comments for giving my girlfriend a uh, <laughs> a compact size Glock 19 size pistol as opposed to like a Ruger LCP or something or some J-Frame 357 with a pink handle, go ahead, I guess. Um, but she knows this gun. Uh, I've trusted this gun. I've carried it everywhere for two years. And... Um, now it's got a pretty new gray slide that she likes, and I've got a pretty new gray frame that I like. And we'll probably upgrade this again. We'll probably take this, put the X300 on there, put a PMM comp on there, and just run it like that, see how it goes. But, yep, here's the new CCW, guys. The Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 Compact 4-inch Barrel with 9mm Spec Series. It's the M&P 9. Um, M&P 2.0. So, anyway... Thanks for watching, guys. These 23 rounders, uh, they need to get filled with defensive ammunition now, so uh, wish me luck on that. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want to watch more videos like this, please like, comment, and subscribe.
Um, I could use a boost in the algorithm because I haven't posted in so long. Oh, look how wobbly that is. Yeah, I just threw it on for the meme. I slapped the slides for the meme, threw it on for the meme. Well, maybe I'll keep it like this. I don't know. That would make people mad. I love doing that. <laughs> I love making people mad. So anyway, yep, that's the video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.